Hey everyone, welcome to the Mayor's Table. On today's episode, we have the Volunteer Partnership Manager for the City of Farmington, Jessica Lazenby. She'll be talking about ways that you can serve in your community here in Volunteer Appreciation Month. Hey everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett, thank you for joining us for another episode of The Mayor's Table. With me today is a first time guest of the show. We're excited to have you on here today. We have Jessica Lazenby. Thanks for having me. Yes. I'm excited to be here. Jessica is the volunteer uh, partner manager. See, I want to make sure we say yes. that. Partnership. Partner. Yeah. Volu- <laughs> the key word is volunteer mm-hmm. and the manager um, <laughs> for the city of Farmington. That's correct. So we're in volunteer is a volunteer appreciation month is that what april is yeah it's global volunteer month global volunteer month Mm -hmm. so what a perfect time to have you come on the show and talk about volunteer opportunities in our community um you know there's a lot there's a lot of need certainly from the city of farmington side there's also a lot of need in the in the private you know organizations that are here in, in our city and you know across this nation and um i think just providing people some input on where they can go and and how they can volunteer and of course show the love to all those who are already volunteering exactly because we had a volunteer dinner wasn't it january uh february February. yeah we did a a big banquet it was the first one we were able to have in a few years so that was pretty cool well and we got to recognize uh folks for the hours of service that they've put in for the city of farmington because when you volunteer for the city underneath the partnership programs, mm-hmm. do we track people's hours? Is that we do? Yeah, we have a volunteer management system where people can log their hours, ah. and we logged over eighteen thousand hours last year. And if lost. if someone were to ask where in the city organization, where would I go to volunteer? Um, online. Well, <laughs> you can sign up online. Yes, but where oh. where exactly like the facilities or services that I can volunteer to help out with there are so many so uh, the biggest program that takes volunteers for the city is the animal shelter and they're always recruiting they are the ones that put in the most hours um, and they have sort of a tiered program where the more hours you put in the more responsibilities you can um, do and then we have the Sycamore Center and the Rec Center they do a lot of activities in the community that require volunteers and we have the um, Bonnie Dallas Senior Center, and they have the Home Delivered Meal Program, they have um, classes for seniors, and the rec centers also have classes too, so if anyone has a skill they'd like to teach people, they can go to one of those facilities. We have the Farmington Police Department, they do some volunteer stuff, they do fingerprinting and special events mostly, Um, They might be taking on more things in the future. And um, what else do we have? We have a lot of opportunities, and it kind of wavers depending on the time of year. Special events is huge. Cleanup events are huge. Uh, That's basically what we focus on. And so I'm glad you mentioned that last part, just about cleanup events. When I first started getting involved here in volunteering, we had an organization called the Farm Team Young Professionals. And we had adopted a portion of Main Street that we cleaned. Really? I think we cleaned it twice a year. Nice. Um, and I've had people reach out and ask, you know, how can I adopt a street? And typically I would send them to um, Farmington Clean and Beautiful, which is a part of the Parks and Recreation. But if they're interested in, in bringing a youth group together, for example, or, um, you know, Student Senate, they would just need to, to go to the website or do they contact you directly? Um, they can apply as a group on our website. We have a, gl- a group application, but if they want to give me a call or an email, we'll set something up with them. We like to do cleanups at least quarterly, okay. especially, and we'll move it around downtown or the lake or Middle Fork Square, all kinds of locations. So it helps when entities reach out to us so we can tell them where the need is. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I noted too, just kind of, you know, if we broke down some of these, the animal shelter, for example, if I was interested in, in serving, volunteering at the animal shelter, what kind of things would that person do? 
um, initially not very fun stuff <laughs> <laughs> they they want them to to help with the laundry and the dishes and help clean the cages and stuff they they put in at least 10 hours before they start to interact with the animals a little bit more just because people the shelter wants to make sure that they're committed and then they will train them on animal safety um, and it's a lot of of time and effort that they put into the volunteers so they want to make sure that the volunteers put in the work first it's funny i've actually had this conversation um a while back because i had a group of people who were like hey why, why don't you guys just bring on more volunteers to to help facilitate programs and different things in all these different facilities as opposed to hiring uh, you know paid people yeah and when we have those discussions, it comes down to, well, what kind, of, what kind of work are we getting out of the volunteer group versus the person that we are responsible for hiring and training and, yeah. and putting them into that, that type of mode? And so I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that there's this process of bringing you in and you've got to do some of that Front less work. fun stuff, yeah. right, the <laughs> work, uh, things that my son has to do that he needs <laughs> exactly. to be about. But I had to do that too. Yeah. And so you graduate. You graduate you up into those other yeah. responsibilities. and. Um, but yeah, knowing that commitment there is really important. Yeah, and then they can focus on the fun stuff like enrichment and sometimes transport anything um, with more responsibility over time. So. That's a great point. We do vol- we have volunteers who actually transport animals from our shelter to mm-hmm. Colorado. And yeah, to Denver. Do they go anywhere else right now? Is it just to Denver area? I think there are other places, but that's mainly where they go. Yeah, I've talked with with uh, Stacy Voss, our director of the uh, the shelter. And I was at a, an event in Colorado, an outdoor recreation conference, and we were walking around with our city of Farmington stuff on, and this lady says, hey, that's where my dog is from. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's but awesome. we've had some you know, great volunteers, of course, taking time out of their day, overnight stays in Denver and mm-hmm. transporting you know, animals up that way. Mm-hmm. So a lot of really diverse things that you could do. Oh, yeah. The, the Bonnie Dallas Senior Center is a, another great example, the Meals on Wheels program. Um, and I'm interested how that's kind of grown over the last, you know, five years where more people are, were staying at home certainly during uh, yeah. the pandemic and we're you know, only getting meals through that, that means. Yeah. And it might be the only meal that they do get. Right. So they get a warm meal and a, a frozen meal every time they are delivered. So. And a friendly, and a friendly hello. Yeah. Which is somebody to check on them and say hello. That's so important. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um. So, Jessica, I have to ask you this because, I mean, you've been in this role two, three years? Two. Two years mm-hmm. now. And, and during a time where volunteering was a little bit challenging. Yeah. Um, but came on following Candy Lemoyne, who had been the, in this role for a very extended period yeah, of time. Over 25 years, yeah, I think. Yeah, and did, did such a great job. What, what makes you interested in, in running a volunteer partnership, so to speak? Yeah, um, I worked in a nonprofit before this um, as one of the United Way partner agencies, and a lot of us utilized volunteers. And it was just it, just that giving sort of spirit that you get in a nonprofit and working with those people and wanting to share that experience and be a bigger part of it. It was really attractive to me. So that's why I landed myself over here. <laughs> and why not help direct those kind of programs? Yeah. I think that's, that's great. Are there any any programs or anything that are coming up or things that you're looking in the future to kind of add to what we're currently doing? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Farmington Clean and Beautiful. We've been working together on an ambassadorship program that we'd like to get more cleanup efforts in our community, maybe an incentive-based program to get more people to help before and after special events, um, before the, the lake opens in the summer, after it closes, those kind of things, and getting people to to bring more volunteers to want to help clean up our community. Um, And there might be some more related activities for the outdoor recreation program. Um, And with the Tota Theater opening, we might have some more opportunities there. So those are some upcoming. I love the ambassador mentality. Because for me, so much of what volunteering in your community does is it gives you ownership. Yes. Over the part that you're contributing back to, you know, the greater the greater good for everybody. And um, and I, I think like you have mentioned, just you personally, the, the, what volunteering has done for you in your own life. I mean, yeah. it's it's enriching. 
Uh, it makes you feel complete, I think, when you're able to give to other people yeah. as opposed to just taking away. But when it comes to the clean and beautiful components, you know, I, I want to reach a point in this community where we don't see trash on the streets, that would be good. Uh, where people are responsible for making sure that they're, they're cleaning up after themselves no matter where they're at and, and leaving the places that they go to looking better than, than how they found them. Mm-hmm. And I think if we all carry that mentality, then it doesn't matter where you're at. If you see a piece of trash on the street, you pick it up and throw it away, throw it away and mm-hmm. use some hand sanitizer and, and, yeah. <laughs> and check the box and say, I did something good today. Yes. Uh, for my Give you community. that dopamine boost for the day. Yeah. I did something. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a windy time of year, so yes. I'm going to focus on this clean and beautiful thing. Uh-huh. During the windy months, uh, if you put your trash cans out at night prior to the, the morning of and it's windy, those things blow over. Mm-hmm. And so I would, as a PSA, ask folks, uh, if it is windy and wind's on the, on the calendar to be uh, you know, the next day or that evening, put your trash out the day, the morning of. Yes. Um, that will help, especially recycle, because the recycle is not bound or find a way to, you know, keep your lid closed yeah and i know we've had kids ask about that like is there another lid that we could put on our trash can so that we don't see uh you know so much trash blowing around and unfortunately that's a that's a waste management question yeah, yeah. put a rock on there or something. Put a rock on there <laughs> yeah exactly right well excellent um the library they're not taking volunteers right now okay. every now and then they'll have an event where they need volunteers but not actively recruiting just um right now i did like the you know, we had an ice cream social event uh, last year mm-hmm. at the Monty Dallas Senior Center, and it was tied to some crafts and things that were going on there. But if you have a particular interest and a, and a passion and something that you want to share that hobby with, I mean, the, the Monty Dallas Senior Center is a great facility for it that. It is, yeah. And Sycamore Park. I mean, both they, of those. They both are. They both have some really great art programs. Um, there's a ceramics class at the Senior Center they have um, art for everyone at the Sycamore Center with people of all abilities can come and do art projects um, and then dancing classes, all kinds of stuff. Zumba. Zumba? Yeah. Well, I know our little workout gym over there, it's which nice. is a great deal, by the way. Yes. Um, financially speaking, it does get a lot of a lot of folks in there. Mm-hmm. Um, just got, you know, as far as number of hours served, I think you said 18,000. Yeah. hours was that just at the shelter or was that kind the of program citywide yeah. citywide and that was the hours that we were able to track that doesn't count all the groups that went out to clean all the special events there are some volunteers that are in the mvp program that are on our um, volunteer management system that enter their hours for those things but if you helped at connie mac or something like that your hours might not be counted in that total so no that makes sense Mm-hmm. Connie Mac's another great example yeah. um, for the ambassadors that we use, yeah. the seating ambassadors and um, different things. Well, I think just generally speaking, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Yeah, um, I'd love to, I think next year, possibly look at bringing on a, a maybe a volunteer expo, which we did prior to. Yeah. A week bring before we couldn't meet anymore. Bring that mm-hmm. back. And because then you're bringing in like San Juan County um, volunteer fire department and mm-hmm really a broad scope of what's happening here countywide where people can can provide their time and effort. Yes, there's so many worthy causes in our area, so it would be good to get the word out. Yeah, it's not just about what the city or even the county. I mean, you've got all these human service organizations, Echo Food Bank. I always try and push people towards those things where, Mm -hmm. you know, people who are in need, how can we help serve their needs? Yes. Um, and CASA, the great volunteer program at Child Haven. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just touching on a couple, but yeah, did Red stand Cross. out. Red Cross, Path. United Way, Path. Yes, there's a ton. Um, lots of places people could go if they want to serve. So. Oh, yeah. Right and we have a list of them on our website, the community ones as well. So. That's great. Yeah. So on you go to fmtn.org. Slash volunteer. Slash volunteer, and it'll actually bring up all of the, uh, not just City of Farmington, but all that, the other local. Yeah, so that direct link will take you to our volunteer page, and then there's some links on the side that say community volunteer opportunities um, and group opportunities, stuff like that. Well, good. Well, I think if people are passionate about where they live and they take pride um, in their city, then volunteering is that logical next step in my mind of, of how you facilitate that. And I used a lot of the volunteering, especially when my, my kids were young, yeah. as an opportunity to engage them and bring them into – how do you take care of your own community? Yeah. And, um, and I, I think those are definitely things we want to pass on. 
I'd actually like to see, um, you know, at the Boys and Girls Club or in our, our schools, and maybe they've, I don't know, I'm not sure if this, obviously just top of my head in the middle of this great interview, <laughs> but putting a program together, a volunteer program in the schools that's tied into to the city of Farmington and facilitating more volunteerism, you know, and through that as yeah, well. Yeah, their student senate programs or their honor societies, they, they require that. some volunteer time, <clears throat> which is great. Um, and a lot of sports teams will also volunteer, but it would be a good way to bring more people that maybe aren't involved in a group per se to, to get out there and volunteer and be part of something. Right. Some sense of community for them. Sure. No, it's good to hear. I know San Juan College High School also required mm -hmm. that as a part of their. They do. Even just to graduate, you had to have some volunteering involved. Yeah. Well, awesome. They do. Jessica, is there anything you wanted to add about National Volunteer Month or anything else going on that's you're kind of directing for the city? Yeah. So we, like you said, it's um, Global Volunteer Month, and that um, there's a specific week too that where volunteers are especially appreciated in that. This month, it's the 16th through the 22nd, and it's just um, something that was started by President Bush, the first President Bush, to get out there, give back to your community, help your neighbors somehow, so volunteer, donate, or recognize people that do volunteer. So if you get a chance, get out there and volunteer this month, um, or at least apply to volunteer and get the, that going and make a difference. I and help it. yourself too you know it's like uh i what i have found is there's kind of core groups of volunteers and people who volunteers generally surround themselves with other people who like to volunteer mm -hmm. and they kind of run in clicks but a lot of those you know volunteer groups are kind of aging mm -hmm. out and we need we need new people uh to reinvigorate a lot of these programs that have been going on for a very long time um so i would encourage the youth groups and the pastors and uh, school officials to encourage their people in the younger in the younger ages so that when they are you know a little bit older they can really contribute and help facilitate the longevity for especially s some of these core volunteer organizations exactly a lot of us couldn't do what we do without volunteers it's so <laughs> critical to even our municipality saving us so many dollars to the taxpayers right. just do you have that number, by the way? Yeah. Um, so it is a volunteer. One hour um, for a volunteer in New Mexico is worth $24.32 because wow. it averages like private sector salaries plus at like a 15.7% benefit um, because when you pay employees, you're paying their benefits usually. Um, so that's what the average cost is. So for us last year, it was... Like over four hundred thousand dollars that uh, volunteers help save us, so it's pretty awesome. That is great. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. Jessica, thank you for what you do and yeah. and for kind of helping organize and, and create opportunity for folks to to give back to their city and encouraging that to that end. Yeah, I'm I mean, happy to do it. It's yeah. a great program, and all the all the programs that we have in the city do so many wonderful things and. Like I said, we couldn't do it without our amazing volunteers. For sure. Yeah. Well, and thank and thank you uh, for putting together that banquet to recognize them yeah. for the work that they're doing. Also, yeah, we're doing a little pancake breakfast for them this month, um, and some of the individual programs will do their own recognition. So it's neat. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Jessica, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope we've opened up your eyes for opportunities where you and your family, your organization, youth group, church. Uh, whatever that may be, where you can make a difference in this community and, and give back and, and provide, uh, again, your passion and your desire to see a bright and clean Farmington uh, making its way into this amazing world that we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. So, Jessica, thanks again, and we will see you here next time on The Mayor's Table.